Fire tutorial and today we're gonna be talking about how to create this scene inside of Houdini. Okay, so here's a couple of images of the scene we're gonna be looking at. Alright, um, and let's jump into Houdini and check out what this looks like. So, right here, I'm inside of the camera, one of the camera of one of the shots that was used to render this, and this is exactly what, what the shot looks like, okay? Pulling out of the camera, I'll show you guys, this is what it is. I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard, and... On my viewport, I'm going to say neither clip plane and zero and just a large number so that we're not getting any clipping on our viewport. So you, you have, we have the scene right here. Okay, so the way that the scene was set up, it's very simple. Um, the cathedral, it's part of a larger cathedral setup that you've seen in my work multiple times. Um, this is the cathedral um, and please leave a comment if you guys want to see how this entire thing was textured there's a lot to a lot of really cool scripting um, tricks used to make this entirely thing procedural um, okay so I'm doing the move centroid to origin so that my cathedral is like fully centered and I am using the clip plane just to crop it so that I'm only getting like one of the pieces of the cathedral that I wanted, okay? Then I'm centering that as you see, or maybe I'm not centering it. Let me see what I'm doing here. Oh, there it is, okay. So, I'm positioning it on the scene okay and then and then the reason why I'm positioning it over there um, this has to do with this is obviously part of a larger project um, and some of the character animation was taking place in this area so that's why I had to build it not on the center which I usually like to build everything right here it's just so much easier for setting up the camera simulations and everything okay but for just for the sake of part of something larger it had to be set up right here so this cathedral right here even though i'm breaking it up into this piece since this is part of a larger procedural setup um it's already textured and it if we hit render it's gonna look fully realistic um so then i'm clipping 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 and i'm only selecting this part of the of this piece and then I'm clipping here too and I'm getting out our walls and then I'm clipping this piece as well and just grabbing the very top so once we merge those together we're gonna get something that looks like this okay so once we put it together then so basically as you can see i'm just using the same elements so i'm just using those same elements from that setup it's just a wall a grid used for the floor and this top part right here is that just that one piece that is mirrored at different scales and this part right here is just the top and then I isolated this part of the top the ring to be able to get that detail on the floor now just a quick tip for you guys um, the way that I'm like so selecting like very simple pieces I'm not I'm not just grabbing one piece by one like a uh, let me close a couple of these things here. File new scene just so that it's like a scene from scratch and show you what I mean.
if we were to select like piece by piece like this, then I would go crazy. Um, if we come up here and do 3D geometry, 3D connected geometry, then Houdini allows you to just simply select a group, like pieces that are grouped. So as you can see, like this is just a very fast way of breaking up the geometry. So that's how I break it up into pieces like that in much simpler ways, okay? So we've got our geometry here, and then we've got the tree coming in through here, okay? So that's our tree. So the way that the tree is set up, this is our tree, and the tree I built on a different software. I built this tree using, um, what's it called? This this software used for uh, creating, for building trees. Um, I think it's called speed tree that's it i used speed tree to create the tree and speed tree is on another subject uh, very fun and really easy to create trees and animate them and add wind and stuff like that but also leave a comment if you want to see a tutorial on how it specifically was built but back to back to where we're at so so I built the tree, I exported it as an OBJ, then I converted it to an Alembic, and, and then I'm converting it back to a polygon. And then, if we middle click here, you will see that we have um, our vertex vertices, and our U, on our vertex attributes, we have UVs that I make sure to export, and then we have um, Our prim a primitive um, a primitive pad um, and 17 primitives so I'm able to select the groups that I need to delete so I grouped the trunk with all the branches so uh, I'm, I'm just simply deleting this everything that's not on this group, which everything that's not on this group is gonna be our leaves. And then in here, I'm actually deleting a bunch of, um, I have a couple of the of the leaves selected, just because if I were to um, grab every single leaf in here and simulate it, it would just be really, really crazy. So I'm using the nulls to output the, the bark and the leaves. And then right here, this um, is setting it up to the proper scale because remember that Houdini works with real life scale and then I am um, doing a UV quick shade here which allows me to see um, that the texture is working and, and the UVs are working properly so so we've got this and then the UV quick shade I am telling it what texture map I wanted to output. So I'm not just, just using the UV quick shade that comes in built with Houdini. It, this one shows you the UV maps, but then those UV maps, I'm selecting, hey, test, test it with this, with this map that I've built for this so that I know that it's working. And then here, our leaves are going through the same process. You can see that they are also working. And of course, uh, I'm using the opacity on our texture so that it, um, it uses the mask to get rid of this part of the geometry that we don't need. Then we're using the assemble to pack them. And then, um, let me see, so we've got them packed. And then I am, I'm adding the normals. And then inside of this DOP, we are using the RBD packed geometry, then with a little bit of a pop force with a small swirl scale, 
and then I'm bringing in our static object which is gonna be our trunk so that the leaves collide and then once we hit play we get all that fancy um, really beautiful leaves flying flying around so this is one of those simulations that's very slow you can probably just leave it overnight and you would be able to get that sort of um, exciting movement I'm gonna hit escape and for the sake of the tutorial just so that we can see something I'm gonna do that same trick I showed you earlier on 3d connected geometry and we're gonna select just a couple of leaves and delete them and delete non-selected so you see since I use 3d connected geometry it actually it just perfectly selects what I want to see like the actual geometry it doesn't cut our geometry so now if we hit play we're gonna be able to check this out And there you go. Now, you can uh, bring in the floor here as well so that they hit the floor. But the reason why I didn't do that is because um, in some of my shots you didn't even see that they were gonna hit the floor so if you're up close or something like that it doesn't matter then I'm packing them adding the material and merging them with the actual tree Then what this is doing, this is a bounding box delete. So all of the particles that leave this, not particles, all the leaves that leave, leave, they get deleted. So just so I can illustrate the reason why this is here, if I take a screen grab and draw, draw it out for you guys. You can see there is a lot of a lot of um, frames that I'm simulating. So after a long, long time, you know the leaves are moving really slow, really slow, really slow. But if you start waiting, like a bunch of leaves would be out here. So we would have tons and tons and tons of leaves out here that the camera will never see. All that is excess for the renderer to calculate so everything that was leaving this bounding would get deleted and then I'm using this to move the centroid to origin just because you know I really really don't like working um, randomly in space um, so then you can come in here, set up your cameras, and get that like really beautiful effect. 